we have to try to get to the point where we address fundamentally the old colonial structures of our society, because those colonial structures really have not um, been transformed. Our system of governance um, really is predicated upon the institutions that were established out of colonialism, and therefore those institutions have tended to respond to the interests and needs of the elites in our society, whether it be in terms of our education system, the healthcare system, um, in terms of worker rights, of women's rights, of um, the people who are incarcerated and so on. Generally speaking, the institutions do not address the interests of ordinary working people, the poor women, youth, farmers, and so on. So I think that, that we have to have a fundamental discussion about those institutions and how do we bring about change to those institutions. The way in which I am contributing presently to social transformation in Antigua and Barbuda is to use the Directorate of Gender Affairs as a machinery to shape some of the understanding and public perception and policies behind really what is gender, how should gender be in, um, integrated into development plans, development goals and implementation, as well as monitoring and evaluation. You have to have a kind of an insider-outsider strategy. You have somehow, if you're trying to affect policy, you've got to work with certain institutions. And I like the fact that your partners include the Caribbean Development Bank, CARICOM, University of the West Indies, because um, while these are all institutions that are reflective of the power relations that are so inimical to us in the Caribbean, there are progressive people within those spaces. My view is that we have to once again reignite, if you wish, uh, the idea of both social movements in terms of people engaging, not just in projects, but in building consciousness, in building movement, um, and, and then having those movements consider ideas about transforming the economic and political structures once again. The work that we had started many years ago when I was um, in the trade union movement through the Assembly of Caribbean People, which really did bring together the first one in 1994. We had 200 people from 20-something countries in the region. Every language area, every sector was represented. We really had an in intense debate and discussion trying to fashion an agenda for the Caribbean, um, for, for sovereignty and for the welfare and well-being of all the Caribbean people. I think that we, that sense of bringing Caribbean people together again across language areas, across, across sectors, um, social sectors, um, is very, very important to identify our common problems and try to, to find a way forward. And that perhaps might help to reignite efforts individually in different countries for transformation. More can be done if the voices of the people are heard in different ways, in different spaces. The budget is one important part of that dialogue because a lot of decisions do boil down to um, what, where's the money being spent. But I think also monitoring how that money is being spent and finding ways to reshape the kinds of democratic arrangements we have, including things like um, more parliamentary hearings, um, things like budget initiatives, um, petitions and so on, and different ways in which people can say, this is really what we want. What can be considered transformative, it's really greater participation in the budget process. In most countries, the budget is perceived as being very internal within government agencies and to a very less extent involved in statutory organizations. But because the budget is a national planning tool, there ought to be very wide range of discussion so that groups like what we have there, the feminist group, persons who are more in touch and the entire country, they can come and then be pressure groups and get involved in the budget planning process so that the concerns are properly articulated and represented in the budget. One of the things that we are doing and trying to promote is an approach to development planning and medium-term strategy development that is based a lot on dialogue uh, across various national uh, stakeholders. And we believe that this is one, this is just one, but we believe that this is one of the ways 
um, that we are that we are contributing uh, to solutions that you know that are inclusive and and, and that take into account um, the needs of of many stakeholders. Second strategy that I'm currently working on is working at the grassroots level with community groups. And so the directorate is within the different communities, working with the churches, working with women's groups and leaders to try to see how we can build their capacity so that they can mobilize change, change for themselves in whatever way they feel comfortable. And that is what is important. We've also created the space to bring these groups into national dialogues. So any initiative or work that we do in the directorate. We seek the feedback from these different groups within society and I think that is a very good best practice that I'd love to share with others. Much of the feminist analysis takes us into places that we've really not focused on. I mean the whole analysis of the care economy We've taken, you know, our gender roles for granted and we've not stopped, looked, analyzed the broader impact it has on society and the very functioning of society. And I think by questioning and challenging the status quo and the traditional ways of thinking, we have opened up new opportunities. And I think if we continue down that road, much more perspectives and solutions can be derived. There is an important place for feminist analysis and for women's movement and we've seen the significance of this throughout the region, the history of the women's movement. Um, definitely women's movement and feminist analysis would clarify the work and provide a greater understanding for the significance of including gender within any development plan or initiative. It will also bring that fresh perspective that is needed from persons who have that academic academic background, persons who have backgrounds from working on the ground at a grassroots level. And when you merge all of this analysis and, and so forth together, you get a beautiful um, combination of strategies that can be, can be included in the work. Feminist analysis and, and the involvement of the women's movement has to be central to any process of bringing about the second republic or bringing about new governance um, for all kinds of reasons. Part of the structures that exist are the old structures which were male-dominated and still are male-dominated and therefore the interests of women are largely excluded and you can't talk about changing the relations of power and not change the relations of power between men and women, um, or between older people and young people, and so on. If you're talking about change relations of power, all relations of power have to be changed, so that there is justice, there is equity, there is fairness, there's no discrimination against anyone. So that has to be central to the process. After all the work that I've done in development and in women in development, is not. It, I'm absolutely convinced that to attempt any kind of transformation without using a feminist lens, feminist analysis, um, feminist politics, we're not going to get anywhere. You need the political work, uh, the movement building out on the streets, challenging, holding governments accountable, doing the work on the outside. You need that. And you need that to be um, led by feminists. And it's, it's important to recognize it's feminist politics we're talking about here. So it's not just about women, but it's feminist. Because only feminism gives you that understanding of um, the person is political, <laughs> you know, that it's not just changing these uh, relationships of um, economic relationships, but you also have to change the relationships at a personal level. You're talking about negotiations, you know, change needs to be negotiated. Um, but as you negotiate, you have to have some principles or some things that are non-negotiable. And for me, feminism is one of them. Feminist politics, feminist analysis, all ground in feminist theory is non-negotiable. Because without that, there's no transformation.